Okay, we're uh, printing this part right now on these two printers. The um, this is a flood the floodlight adapter for the helping hand, and we're printing it in PET G on these. ANET printers. I'm printing this part on the uh, flat uh, rough surface, not on the glass bed on these two printers. It's given me a good texture and everything and the parts will uh, remove without a problem. I'm printing six on each uh, printer a cycle and each printer's requiring uh, 29 hours 7 minutes of run time and we're running 20% infill on these two. The only difference between these two jobs is I started this one first and I noticed that I was getting some rough uh, finish on the infill and I was running at 100 on the uh, speed on that one so I cut the speed down to 60 on this one and it's doing a much better job in getting a smoother uh, infill there. So, but other than that I should end up in another 20 some odd hours with 12 more of this particular part and then I'll continue to run these another cycle for another uh, 30 hours approximately and get the other 12 parts that I need. I need about 25 and I've got this one so that, that'll give me what I need on that. On these, um, by the way, these are the ANET ET4s. Now down here on the ET4 Pros, I am printing glass bed down here, and I'm printing six parts of the uh, vice clamp holder for the helping hand. And over here, I'm printing uh, five of the extension arm holders. These are all of these are being printed in PET G. This was the one that I just uh, showed you. I videotaped using the counter to count off the 67.54 meters of filament for this one. And this one takes 76.7 meters of filament. And I ran that through the filament counter and got that amount on there. So these jobs should finish and end up with uh, somewhere around a meter or less of filament left on the spool. So, and they'll be running, this one's running 50 hours, 40, 45 minutes. And this one's going to run for 47 hours and 38 minutes. So that's just um, a little bit of what's going on down here. I'm printing some specific parts and quantities for the um, startup inventory to make sure I've got everything I need when we launch the website here in a couple weeks. So and other than that, I've got some Tronic C XY2 Pro printers that I need to be working on. So I'll, I'll be working on that. And I don't know if I'll have time this evening. If not, I'll probably work on them tomorrow, getting some jobs ready to run over there. So that's what's going on down here at the print farm. Okay, we're over here with our King Runes. This is, uh, if you remember, this is the old or the original uh, print farm, mini print farm that I have in the home. Uh, I've gotten to the point now 
now that I have the new print farm that I can run 24 hours and it's running as we speak, um, I'm trying to run the print farm here at the home on 12 hours or less runs and mainly with my king runes which are very reliable and consistent. Uh, the reason for cutting my time down here is I feel a little more comfortable not having these printers uh, running in the house where I sleep and um, running continuously. So um, I run them during the day. I'll start these jobs in the morning and usually set them up to run for 12, 14 hours or something like that where they'll be shutting down before I go to bed at night. And basically we're running some different parts on different ones. Down there at the end, these are base parts for the uh, table mount helping hand. I try to keep keep those printing and then I print other parts as as I need them. But the main inventory for the helping hand will be printed on demand at the uh, new print farm and be printed on the printers that we have down there which are larger format than these little 180 by 180 millimeter king runes. They're uh, 220 by 220 up to 330 by 330 down there with several uh, 255 by 255 Tronic CXY2 Pros. So we can print a lot of parts down there. And the whole idea of the print farm is not to have to have a lot of inventory in house. Right now we're building a startup or a base inventory for sales that will be starting within the next couple weeks on the uh, website. So we still have uh, several more parts to print down there and I have some printing down there right now. Okay, these are some of the printers that I'm running down at the print farm right now. And if we zoom in a little bit, we can see that this one's just finished printing. This one's almost finished. And this one still has a long way to go. And that one still has quite a bit to go. But I can monitor these printers from uh, my cell phone here at the house and see how they're doing. As you can see, But these printers have been running now for about 24 hours already. Uh, they were started yesterday. So I'll be keeping close tabs on, on those jobs and probably be going down there this afternoon. So some of these jobs I'm running now where they run over 24 hours, uh, I'll only go down there about once a day and usually spend about an hour down there resetting printers or doing some other test prints, whatever we need. But anyway, that's a little bit what's about what's going on here with the King Runes and as well as down at the print farm with the um, ANET printers down there. Well, a couple of our jobs are finished here. That's the uh, base for the helping hand. Looks like it's in good shape. I think we'll go ahead and shut down this printer. By the time those finish, it'll be about my bedtime, so 
We'll come back up in a little bit and check on the progress, see how they're coming along. That one's getting close. We're looking a little closer at these uh, three print jobs running here. This is actually the base for the helping hand table mount. So the table mount of the helping hand base. Now we're going to step over here and look at a little more of what goes into that because uh, most of you out there already know this, but a lot of people may not know that um, to make that base, there's a, there's a lot of printing involved in that. You're going to use 24.33 meters or 24,331 millimeters which is a little bit over 24 meters of filament. But the code that goes in to printing this is 327,934 lines of code. So that's how much code, most of that code is involved in uh, positioning the head as it builds this model just one fraction of a millimeter at, at a time and you also look you can see that it's going to take seven hours and 14 minutes to print that part now this is the G code and if you can see we're starting at line one here and going on down and if you look at the code a little closer, you may not understand it, but you can see that um, uh, you can figure a lot of the code out just by the um, explanation of it. But if you go on down and scan all of the code, we're at 258,000 lines of code here. And you can see these are X, Y, positions. The extruder is um, extruding at this rate. Then we can go on down and you'll finally see at the end of it that's your 237,932 lines of code. So there's a lot that goes into the software portion of slicing and getting this part uh, to the printer and telling the printer what to do. Telling the printer what temperatures, what positions for the head and so forth. So I just thought I would uh, pass that along. I know there are some people out there that may not uh, realize what all is involved. Okay, this is another part of the assembly process. <clears throat> with these base, with the base helping hand units here, uh, assembly involves a couple things. One, I have to uh, insert this switch. It snaps in. Then I have several of these ports that need to go in here. They have to go in a certain position, then they'll snap in and lock. This is where your 3D printing has to be precise because printing these parts you have to make sure that they're going to be printed so that these parts will fit in there not only fit in but fit in tight when they snap into place
Okay. These are all finished and ready to be soldered.